Hello everyone, I'm Travis Johnson and welcome to Elements of Bioinformatics for Biologists. Today I'll be talking to you about Monocle, which is a tool that's used to process and visualize single cell RNA sequencing data. So here's a, just a brief overview. Um, I'll go over basically what is Monocle, I'll give a few use cases for Monocle, and I'll do a brief overview of the workflow. And after the workflow, I'll actually go through and do a real world example. So what is Monocle? Uh, put simply, it is an R package, and it is used to do multiple tasks related to single cell RNA sequencing data. These tasks include clustering, differential gene expression, and probably most importantly, pseudotime inference. One other useful takeaway from this is you can actually use Monocle to do a lot of the same processes that you can use Surat. So it's really preference for some of these things like clustering and differential gene expression, which one you want to use. So next, when should we be using Monocle? It's uh, one of the first packages to do pseudotime inference. So this would be uh, inferring the trajectories of cells. So just to give a few examples, tumors may have a trajectory where you have a progenitor cell followed by multiple cells that um, have evolved from that cell. You can also see uh, trajectories in cells due to a stimulus. So maybe you've treated these cells with a chemical and at every 24 hours you're measuring the cells and you can get some sort of trajectory from that. Some other, some other areas are cell aging and also cell cycle. So I'll just give you a brief overview of the Monocle workflow. So the first thing that we do with the Monocle package is we have to load the data. After we load the data, there's a lot of built-in functions that we use to normalize the data. After we normalize the data, we cluster the single cells based on those normalized values. Next, we can select which clusters we're interested in to do pseudotime inference. So if you look here, the uh, the cyan cluster in the, up in the middle of the screen, that seems like there is some, some trajectory in the cells. So we're gonna be predominantly interested in those cells. So if we select these cells, we can then cluster them again. And then based on those clusters, we can perform pseudotime inference. And so this just predicts that this cell type one moves to cell type cell type two, and then eventually branches off to cell type four. So you can see that these are the same clusters, it's just that we have now uh, performed a trajectory analysis so that we can see what direction and what branches of cells come off of progenitor cells. So next I'm gonna switch to R so that I can show you the real world example. So if you can see here, I, I am following partially a tutorial um, from this website. <clears throat> I'm not actually doing exactly what they're doing. Um, I'm using different data as well. The data that I'm using is, uh, is some of the CD138 negative data from uh, multiple myeloma patients. So these contain a lot of different cell types, and that's why we'll get some pretty good clustering based off of it. So the first thing we need to do is load the Monocle library. And we'll just check what the version is. So this is the first step that I highlighted in the PowerPoint presentation. We need to actually load in the data. And so we'll go ahead and load in those data files. Next, we need to create an annotation data frame for the actual samples, so that's PD here, and for the features, that's FD. Next, we need to uh, label the column names, and the only column name that really matters here is gene short name, which is required by the Monocle package. So the, the gene symbols need to have this as their column name. Another important thing to keep in mind 
is that the row names of FD and PD need to, the row names of FD need to be the same as the row names in your expression matrix. <clears throat> and the row names in PD need to be the same as your column names in the expression matrix. So for these reasons, I'm just setting those row names and column names <clears throat> to the uh, to the the proper columns in FD and PD. So the data the data object that this package uses is called a cell data set. So we're going to turn the expression matrix, the phenotype data in PD, and the feature data in FD into the proper objects. Once we do that, we're going to now normalize the data. Hold on. Then we can actually go in and cluster the data. So you can see the clustering algorithm is running PCA and also TSNI, and they're doing uh, <clears throat> running a clustering algorithm on those reduced dimensions. And if we plot that, then we can see this plot that um, I showed you in the in the PowerPoint presentation. So these are all things that you can either perform on your own or using the Surat pack package or actually a multitude of other packages. So up until now, you don't really need Monocle. And even the trajectory analysis, a lot of packages have started to include the pseudo time inference. So to make this a little bit faster, we're going to only use the clusters um, shown here in the upper left-hand corner. So one, two, seven, and eight. So we're using that subset of clusters. Huh. Okay, uh, I don't know why it was causing an error there, but it seems to be working now. And we can recluster the, the subset of clusters we were interested in. And you can see actually that they're pretty much the same. They're slightly different. So next we need to identify differentially expressed genes. And this part will actually take about a minute and a half. Um, because it needs to go through and do differential gene expression on about 7,500 7, genes. So bear with me on this. I only have uh, a MacBook Air that I'm working on right now, so it, it'll take a minute and a half. But what, what we need these differentially expressed genes for is that we'll use them <clears throat> to, to do the pseudo time inference. So if, we're, if we use genes that are not uh, different between the clusters, then it's going to be more difficult to calculate 
the, uh, the pseudo time or the, the change between cells. So just bear with me and uh, it should, should finish up here relatively soon. It's also worth noting that you, you really can perform the clustering analyses with a lot of other tools. So the, the primary purpose to use Monocle a lot of the time is the pseudo, pseudo time inference. <clears throat> Alternatively, things like the Surat package can be used a lot more for uh, for combining data sets and reducing batch effects. But like I said, there's a multitude of, of, of software packages out there in multiple different programming languages uh, to do many of these tasks. All right, so now that we have our differentially expressed genes, we can now um, re reduce the dimensionality with DDR tree and we can order the cells, and then we can finally plot the trajectory of the cells. So you can see here that instead of the previous plot, we end up with this trajectory. And you can see the branches where we're going from one cell type to another cell type. So this is sort of like an inferred um, almost like evolution of the cells. And in some cases, it, it literally is the evolution of the cells. So uh, that's really all I have for you today. So uh, thank you for joining me and I, I hope this helped. And if I can, I'll try to get this code out to you, to you as well in case you wanna try these analyses on your own. Thank you.